Insertion failed. Filling. Uh, let's try these ones. Is not equal to that. What's this? Gen code. We're back. I fixed it. You didn't fix shit. If it's equal to zero, uh, and what's the font called? No idea. So we got some gorgers. Oh, we got some goigles in here. Okay, so it's definitely the four two fives, maybe. Why don't I poison in here? How do I know why this happened? Oh, it just jumps back. Oh, handle exception. If an exception is pending. Um... Um, God damn it, this is shit. Ah. Uh. How do I fix this? Mm hmm Mm hmm Are we going to learn anything? Um, could be the 257, could be the negative one. What's 257? It's not. Fake exceptional will be handled outside of this. If this, what? Wait, what? If user only. It is user only. So it's a fake exception?
hack for x86 user mode. Do VM exit? That's an actual VM exit. Um. Oh, we can do log interrupt. There we go. Problem solved. Uh. The end. Okay. Interrupts an exception. Okay, fine. Doesn't. Okay. Apparently that doesn't do shit. And PE mask. Uh, protection mode enabled. LMA mask. I was gonna say if true. Clean. Not clean, unclean, dirty. Do interrupt all. Let's see for hitting that code. We're not hitting that code? How? We're hitting exception. If it's less than zero, what is this? An int? It's not. It's 257 or negative one. It might be negative one. If replay has exception and that What is happening? Dude, I hate this code base. If you write code that uses set jump and long jump, you should literally stop writing code. Quit your fucking job and go do anything else. Seriously. If you fucking write set jumps and long jumps, you are just wrong. You're just wrong. But I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. I'm probably getting long jumped out of here. And I, I the, just, what can I do about that? How do I recover from a fucking long jump? I can't. I literally can't. <sighs> if it's less than zero, it gets discarded. If it's greater than that, it goes here. Otherwise, it goes into here. Fake user interrupt. If it's user only, which this is user only, and somehow this function doesn't get called. I don't know how, but it doesn't.
Because I'm pretty sure we just did... Um... How are we getting two exceptions? We got one here and then loops again, I guess. Uh... Oh, there's a stack of an exceptions. I see. So it's eating the stack. It gets 257, then it gets negative one, which is the end of the stack. Okay. I think. Debug exception. Not user only. Interrupt request. Is that what we're hitting? Dude, I don't fucking know. I like... I really want to say I just don't care, but this is just going to be an issue later down the line. Because this is just wrong. This needs to be a mutex, I guess. I was hoping I didn't have to use a fucking mutex for a thread local, but I think I have to. <sighs> I am so... Fucking sick of this shit. Can I can I mass signals? Can I just mask all signals temporarily and then unmask them? And I guess only sometimes this happens, like there it happened, now it's fucked. That's called at entry. This is called at exit. Nothing else happened. Because we don't call long jump. Um, the only way a long jump could happen is a signal. How do I block signals temporarily? Sig proc mask. Examine and change block signal. Of the calling thread. Perfect. How? 
Sig block. Union of the current set and the set argument. We give a sig set. I'm guessing that's just a bit mask. What's a sig set T? Uh, user includes sig null dot h. Sig set T defined in bits types. Uh, it's a type def of under under sig set T. Nice. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, okay. It's, uh, yeah, I see. It's a bit mask. Makes sense. Let's see if I have it. Uh, I guess I can get signals inside of here as well. Let's see, uh, docs.rslibc. Sig set. Nice. There's a sig set T. All the fields are private, so it's useless. But we do have a sig set T. I have libc. Um, so lift. It only matters where I get hook state. Hook state. Well, technically, all these things need to be signal safe. Fucking gross. Fucking gross. How do I flush this? Safe to call from JIT function. Bam. Calls exit then entry. Um. I can long jump at any stage. Dude, I I don't fucking know, man. Why would I not be hitting Let's change this into a lock. I hate this, dude. Because I should hit this. Right? I should hit this before anything else. Uh, Does it now just work? Are you fucking kidding me? Nope. 
How? We have a lock held. Okay, so that means that entry has to be returning. So we're calling entry again. Without calling exit. We're basically back to backing entry, right? That's what that has to mean. That's the only way that can happen. Is somehow we call entry twice, it completes the first time, and then we call it again without calling exit. But somehow we call it again, but buffer is not... It, active buffer is not set? And that... See, here's what's weird. I get a lock. I assert that the active buffer is none. I unconditionally set the active buffer to some. And then we return. And then somehow we call entry again. But we call it again and somehow the active buffer is none again? Even though it has to be set? Because if we call exit, then we're going to be dropping and flushing that. Unless a signal fires in the middle of all this shit. Right? I think a signal is the only thing. We don't long jump. Okay, what happened? So, it has to be inside... Egg well, if a signal fires inside exit, then we'll have a poison error. Because the lock will be held. And we'll enter in again. How the fuck does this work? Like, what? How is it po- Like, how is this statefully possible? Hook.lock. Lock is held this whole time. Exclusive access. Guaranteed to be some. Guaranteed to be none. This. Guaranteed to be some. And guaranteed to be none at the end. Must have the lock held. Would panic if we long jumped in the middle of this. So if we call entry twice, we should get a panic. If we call exit twice, we'll get a panic. If we get a signal in the middle, or, middle of either of these and we call entry or exit again, we'll get a panic because the lock is held. What am I missing? What other possible case is there? Unless it's not that. Maybe it's just a bug in my buffer thing. I don't know how a buffer would be used twice if it requires mutable access and a lock to be held to access the fucking pipe. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. How? Oh. Is it end not being called? Well, if exit's not called, then this is going to be some. I tried to write this pretty defensively, where it panics if anything fucking goes wrong. How does this work? How does this work? What possible condition allows for that? How can I call a function mutably twice with a mutex held? Anyone know? Anyone have any brilliant ideas? No? No one's got ideas? Oh, I fucking hate this code base! I could write an emulator faster than this that would perform faster than this. Linux moving my thread to new core? Doesn't matter. Unless it's a Linux bug. 
which I doubt. Literally no idea. Like we can't double enter. That's what's so confusing. We can't double enter. If we got a signal in here, then we can't call this because we have a lock. Unless the signal is handled correctly, in which case we come back and we execute. I don't get it, chat. Mutable no alias? Good try it. Present free. Free. Killing. I don't get it. Unlock. Mm, fuck. Long jump doesn't like unwind, does it? I don't think it does. Like, why would long jump unwind? Maybe it does? Maybe we get a signal here. We long jump, that unwinds, that undoes the lock, that prevents active buffer from being set. Thoughts? Thoughts? I've got nothing else. That's the only thing I can think of, is somehow long jump unwinds and the unwinding causes it to somehow work. That's the only place I can see, like, you have to 
You have to alloc buffer here, and then you have to not hit this. Once you hit this, then we're gonna panic. Don't think it unwinds. Yeah, I wouldn't fucking think so. What's the error if you don't transmute? I can't, I can't store a borrowed reference. I can't store a borrowed reference into something that, that isn't borrowed. Right? It's just, just not valid. Well, I haven't marked as static. Right? It's just a chunk writer, but it's static. It just dropped the lifetime. It doesn't transmute anything else. Everything else is identical. It just changes the lifetime to static. And that's okay, because we put in manual drop. And we can't access, uh, we can't access again if active buffer is, is, uh, sum. So if active buff, if active buffer is sum, then this has to live forever. Which it does, because it's in a fucking global. Technically, the thread can exit. But if the thread exits, then we don't free any of this shit. So it doesn't matter. Um... Hmm. I don't see how this is possible. I don't see literally any way this can happen unless there's an unwind in the middle of my code. And it has to be an unwind. Otherwise the lock is poisoned. Or it's a thread local bug. Or we have memory corruption. And it just happens to be setting that to that number. That's not equal to filling.
This is the only place we set it to filling. Like, how else would this be filling? This is the only place it's set to filling. I don't think it's ma magical memory corruption that happens to be setting that exact value to the exact value of filling. And this is a mute self. And the only way you can call a mute self is if you have the lock held, which is only done here. And to do that, you need the lock held. So we're calling a function with the lock held twice. I hate Kimu. Kimu is a hacky piece of shit. The only reason it's popular is because people think emulators are hard to write, but they're not. Uh... It's a little bit slow when we do this. I think it'll speed up with time. Uh, I probably should just, I don't know, one milli is probably good enough. You know what? Sleep might not work. Sleep might not work because we're in the kernel, and that might, like, block or change behaviors of signals and stuff. Can you try GDB? Yeah, like, seeing the backtrace would be maybe nice, but I don't... Think it's gonna tell us much? Nope, there's the buffer state filling. What the fuck? Oh! Okay, I have another idea. Where's my fucking rand?
It's not, we're not creating the same pipe. Is it a clone? Is it a clone? Are we getting like fucking clones somehow? Does clone clone thread local? I assume that thread locals would be... Oh my god, it could be that. Does cloning duplicate thread locals? I feel like that would be really stupid if it did. But if it did, then it's already initialized. Is that, it, does it dupe it? If that's the case, then I feel like an idiot. I'll feel like a big dum-dum. But I would imagine it would just recreate it, but maybe not, maybe not. Maybe that's how Thread Locals work. Uh, okay, do I have T on here? Or is that fucking panic? Did this not panic? No, it panicked. Oh, we don't know where. Cause yeah. Uh, mm, bu -bu 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 -bu. We'll just e-print that. Problem solved. Looks like a failure to me. Uh, what? These are definitely the same B66s. That's not a coincidence that there's two B66s in here. Five five B's. That's two different tids. That looks like two pids. Eighteen two eight five and eighteen two two nine. Uh-huh. We're gonna leave that up. We just did a clone.
Who creates this? 427? Okay, uh, all right. Chat, I think we're making progress. Maybe I just don't know how thread locals work. Are thread locals not recreated on a new thread creation? Are they duplicated when you clone and then you just get new ones? Or is it these specific flags or some shit? Um, okay. Uh, tid, tid and tid that created this pipe. Owner. Yeah? Okay. Is this going to crash? Is this going to panic chat? Bets? Dynamically performed on the first call within a thread and values that implement drop get destructed when a thread exits. Owner mismatch. Okay, so 992 clones to create 9050. So here's the clone that fucks us. That's 100% it. We found it. We found the bug. We found the fucking bug. My code is not wrong. <laughs> wow, that's a tough one, chat. I mean, it's not necessarily Kimu's fault either. We'll see. People might get a refund. We'll see. Uh, above Seagull? What is it? Do you know what it is above Seagull? That oh fuck. You were right? Okay, so, uh, Russ. Let's see what Russ docs have to say about thread local then. So, thread locals are not thread locals, okay? That's really important to understand. Thread locals are not thread locals. Is it possible for TLS to reinitialize other TLS slots during destruction? <laughs> Clone child clear tid. Clear zero, the child thread ID at the location pointed to by child tid or blah. I 
I think it's because I clone inside of a JIT. Which means that the clone doesn't... I think this clone doesn't go to, like, libc clone or some shit. It doesn't, like, call the constructors that would initialize TLS. Now we just read. Libc sets up TLS for you? Yeah. Chad, do you like this bug? Is this fun? Is this fun, chat? Set tid. Store the child tid. This is just fork. Then what's 11 hex? What's 11 hex? Are there other clones in the trace? Yes. Um. This is a weird clone. TLS. This sets a TLS. This sets a TLS. But this one doesn't. Set TLS. Set TLS. This doesn't have a set TLS. I thought I fucked up. I thought my code was bad. But no, 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 my code's fine. Fuck me. Um, user desk, set third area. Uh, it is the new value to be set for the FS base register on arcs with a dedicated TLS register. It's that blah, blah, blah. Use of this flag requires detailed knowledge and generally it should not be used except for in libraries implementing threading. What does it do if you don't give it? I think they're just, well, it can't be that there isn't one. Holy asshole. Inheriting stuff from the parent doesn't sound wise either. Yeah. How many applications do you think have this bug? Imagine you can just change the behavior of fucking TLS. You can literally just have race conditions on TLS. This is fucking wild. You know, shit, there's an owner mismatch. 
I'd fucking hope so. And yes, this does violate my only one user of my initial implementation. This totally makes sense. Fuck me. It clearly inherited the owners because here's the owners and or the processes and then we're in another thread and it's the thread that was just created and yeah. I wonder if things clone and then they set the TLS. But that's not... Is that a Kimu issue? Because Kimu user... I would hope that Kimu user hijacks the TLS, but we're clearly using the, the newly cloned processes TLS and we're executing jitted code. Right? Can I feel less bad about having this bug? Like this isn't particularly intuitive, is it? It's not particularly intuitive that you make a new thread, but it uses the old thread's thread local storage, right? It's okay that I was defensive and thought that mutable access to a thread local was mutable access to a thread local. But fuck me. I mean, look, sometimes I'm dumb. <laughs> sometimes I make mistakes. So what do I do? Do I make my own thread local storage in a global? But I can't... Then I need to call... Get PID? I don't know if I can call get PID though. Right? I have to call get PID on every JIT entry and exit. I guess JIT entry and exit is pretty rare. It's every time the JIT buffer is full, I have to fly. I think I can call. I can make my own thread locals. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Right? I'm going to say this is a Kimu issue because Kimu is not isolating the host's um, thread local storage from the guests because the only way we hit JIT entry is if we're entering a JIT and we're entering a JIT on a thread that was just created and an OTLS was set up. I'm going to award this to... Uh, this bug's going to Kimu here. Personally, I think Kimu... Does everyone agree with that? Do people think that... If you are writing an emulator, you should not allow the child process to fuck up the coherency of the emulators outside of the emulators TLS. I feel like the TLS of the host should be protected from the TLS of the guest. If you want the guest TLS to be arbitrary and uncontrolled, then I think the guest... TLS needs to be handled anywhere that it could be created. AKA, Kimu should hook this and be like, yo, this isn't specifying a TLS. We should set one up for it. I'm going to award this to Kimu. I don't, think, I don't think it's my fucking fault that my TLS is not thread local storage. It's Kimu's bug. Rip all the Ode. <laughs> Rigged. <laughs> Bogus co clone call is not real. These are guest clones. These are not host clones. These are guest clones. And let's go look. New from the start. Oh, yeah. This bug was so intuitive. 
Fuck me. I thought I sucked at writing code. I was like, shit, do I literally not know how to write atomics? I legitimately was questioning whether or not I'm smart enough to make my own data structures with atomics. Fuck me, dude. Oh, look at all those O- 84,000 Ode being redistributed. <laughs> Let's see. Who got pained on that? 32 people voted for against me. 16 be people voted against Kimu. Oh, wow. Some people are making some serious Ode. Oh. Oh, oh. To that feeling when Kimu gives you imposter syndrome. Jesus Christ. Oh, at least we've root caused it. We've root caused the bug. I don't feel terrible terrible about existing anymore. Oh. Okay. Target clone back. <laughs> Linux manages to have three different ordering spurts arguments to clone. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. Could I have had Kimu rewritten in Rust? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, rip your biddies. I've had many Kimu bugs like that. Yeah, Kimu is really not great. Kimu user is Kimu user is being developed from a pass-through model and then slowly being converted into an isolation model. So they started off with passing everything through and then in post they slowly uh, are making things actually not pass through. I had another emulation issue the other day for it recently got added, literally a month ago, or like three weeks ago it got added, where um, things that call mAdvise don't need, which causes the memory to get zeroed out. Kimu's implementation was like, we don't implement mAdvise. It's just advise, return zero. It's fine, just do nothing. Well, that's not very right when it can zero out massive chunks of memory that you pass to it. Um, so that catastrophically broke another program I was working on. Once again, I would not have any of these issues in my own emulator because when I write an emulator, I read the man page and I like think, I use my little noggin. And when it's like, mAdvise don't need zeros out all of the memory, I'd be like, oh, I probably shouldn't blindly say that this was a successful call. <laughs> I think it might have blindly returned an error, which then means the consumer blindly assumed it worked. But, y you know, you get my point. And I don't use long jump. I thought it could have been long jump. I still don't think I catch all the long jumps correctly. POSIX doesn't ensure that it's zeros. Yeah, it's a Linux thing. Yeah. And uh, there's a large software project that uh, assumes that it's zeros. <sighs> isn't, it, isn't, isn't using other people's code fun? We'll just we'll cuddle with the cannoli to feel better. I'm glad I did get this cannoli. I should scissor this off. I have the scissors right here. The ride never ends. Yeah, that's fucking right. All right, we got the cannoli. Live sur cannoli surgery. Posix, uh, yeah. Have you seen uh, Brian Cantrell's Don't Need Lightning Talk? No, I haven't. Oh my god, does it hit on this exact thing that I was talking about? Uh, do fork. Linux user. Um, so it already, it, okay, so it pre-orders them. 
for a clone, it unconditionally calls do fork. It handles the reordering of arguments here, such that here, we no longer have to worry about it. So we do have a noodles. God, I love this song. It's, on, oh, it's just got terrible mixing, and I love it. It's so good. I'm going to cue this up. <laughs> okay so um clone ignored flags detach an io v4 vm settles cpu set tls and then it just sets it for the CPU, the emulated CPU, and this is going to be for each CPU is going to have their own, um, where it will set them. Set TLS. This is on the child side. So it calls host fork. Yeah. New env. Create a copy of the env. Um, it calls pthread create. Clone funk. Wait. 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 Get Ted, get Ted. I have been, I have been. It would have to be undoing the fucking TLS. If and clone VM. Is it clone VM? I don't know. I don't know if it's clone VM or not. If it's not clone VM, we consider it a fork. Ah, fuck me. NSA used to hack without remorse. Right? Wasn't that a banger? Moonshine. Yeah. Micro blaze? You blazing up, dude? Emu Spark. Uh. 
Uh, okay, so it's doing a fork. There's not a clone VM. I forget what all these do. Run in the same memory space. Invalid fork flags. Memory rights performed by the calling processor. I see. Yeah, so they cow the whole space, right? So that would make sense. I, I have the same TLS backing. What do I want to do here? One Kimu bug I had, it would switch from 32-bit mode to 16-bit mode every time you said GS. <laughs> uh, it's great. So I think that makes sense because it's not clone VM. And since it's not clone VM, it's considered a fork. Which means that it's inheriting the same TLS. Which means that the existing data is still in the TLS. Which would explain this behavior. So what do I do? If it's not set, it runs in a separate copy of the memory space. Memory writes to the, as, uh, wait. Memory writes performed by the calling process or by the child processor are also visible in the other process. And that's what we're hitting. What is that? This is, this is a cannoli. I got a cannoli. You like my cannoli? So, that's weird because this literally calls fork. Oh, this calls block signals. Sig, yeah, mask. Fill set, yep. Um... If we're in the child, set TLS, new TLS. The noodles. And we just don't have noodles? What do we do about that? Hey Siri, set an alarm for seven. Um... Fuck me. <laughs> what do we do? Does Fork seriously not create new TLS? Like, it's literally calling default no parameter fork on the host. Right? That's wasm and scriptum. People listening to the stream on speakers now on alarm set.
There's a ZTLS model? What's this? Global dynamic is the most general option. Model usable if the TLS data is only accessed from a shared library. Oh, model usable if the TLS data is only accessed from the shared library or executable it is design defined in. The TLS data may be in a library loaded after start. I could do that. I could do local dynamic. Right? I can do that. Usable if... Because our, our stuff is not accessed outside. We didn't even have it accessible, right? Um... Fuck it, jitter. Yeah, it's static. Yeah, we definitely don't hand that off because that's like a very rust object. Um, Model usable if the TLS data is defined in the executable or in a shared library. Um, loaded at program startup. Must not be deal opened. Okay, so that doesn't work. Model usable only if the TLS data is defined directly in the executable, but not in a shared library. Do you think this would change anything? Local dynamic on... Let's see what this does. I, uh... x 664 uh very similar to the i32 genie variant the tls get adder function is called and that's gonna yeah that's gonna uh get off i think gs such a structure in the got what's the what's the local dynamic model No advantage over global, blah, 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 if there's just one variable. Okay, so that's useless. And we can't use init or local. What do we do? So does forking without clone VM just not fucking... Like, this fork doesn't give us new thread locals? Or does it not because we're not fo forking inside of our thing? Target CPU is i386. Doesn't do anything. Fork end. Child process. So we're in here. Uh, that's fine. Fork and child. Set TLS. On seven. Set thread area. I'm just going to put a print here. I'm just curious if I'm hitting that. I don't think so. What am I what am I doing, chat? What's my solution here? 
Yeah, it, we just don't. We're just inheriting the host. One of these, one one. One of these must be um. Clone VM. It's probably the bottom bit. Probably one. Uh, VM user include. Uh, push D user include. Fuck, that's not what I wanted. Clone VM. Is it one? One hundred. This doesn't have clone VM. What? Uh. Oh yeah, it doesn't have clone VM, so it goes to here. No clone VM, we go into here. What do we do? What do we do? Ah! Implement your own TLS with a global in a pit. Yeah, that's basically where I'm at. But that... That sucks. I don't know how I do that. Like... I would have to make a hash table. N might be low enough where I can maybe get away with using a, an array. So if you don't do set TLS, you just inherit like a normal fork. How do you do a thread local in C? Can someone tell me quick? Like under under thread local, I think. Like this. Under under thread. Got it. Okay, that's five. That makes sense. And it starts off as let's set it to sixty nine. So sixty nine five. And then if we do fork, it's not 69 again. Um, if, if it's zero, then this is the child, otherwise it's the parent. We might have to sleep in here. Clean. Uh Yep. Wow. So thoughts That makes sense. They're not mutating the same thing. Parent child. Because this is cowed. So that's a copy on right. But they point to the same thing that's initialized. So they don't start at... Fo uh, they don't 
only the parent, uh, this is like, and it main. And we said it's a five parent and child are both five. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to say on a scale of one to, I don't like that. Uh, it's an, I don't like that out of 10. Okay. Well, uh, well, I gotta go, uh, I gotta go make dinner, because I've got Raid in, like, 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to make my own thread local storage. Did we think it would start at 69 on every new thread? That's what I would hope. I feel like that would be a, a, a requirement for thread locals to be thread safe, right? Right? Am I crazy for thinking that? Because, like, in Rustland, yeah, that's a thing that you have mutable reference to. And if you have a mutable reference to that thing, it might not be valid in the, in the state it's in when it's cloned. Right? It might only be valid when it's completely, like, finalized and ready to be cloned. So. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's going to be the stream for today. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we did debug it. We did figure out exactly what's going on. Um, so that's easy. So now I just have to make my own TLS. I'll probably make a... I'll probably make an atomic uh, hash table where I'll like statically allocate like 1,024, like 4,096 entries, and then it will uh, use your pit as a hash, and then it will search if it, there's a collision, and it will support removal because it will just replace it with a null because it needs to be pretty fast. I don't think I can use a mutex there, unfortunately. Um, so... We'll do that. We could maybe use my atomic hash table, but that's insert only. Um, I don't even know if we can make this insert only, to be honest. We can't. Uh, I'd have to use compare exchange 16B. I'd have to use assembly to make this work, but I, I can make an atomic, uh, hash table work for TLS. Um, I could just do get PID every time. Well, let's see. Yeah, let's see. You know what? We've got four minutes until I, I'm going to leave. Uh, here's what we can do. Give us a smile. Okay, we don't need any of the things that we were working on, right? Right? So we're going back to the old model that has that race condition, and all we're going to do is we're just going to detect it. Um, so. um, and I'm definitely feeling very, very, very shoddy. I ain't got a bright time. Tell me that the line is gone. And I know that you're only a man, but I swore that you were an angel. Ah, uh, drop, drop, drop. That's another thing is I don't want to drop a TCP stream. I guess we'll just forget what's there. I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to forget these. Okay. Um... Even though this is a thread local, we have to check these things uh, because fork in Kimu uh, allows 
breaking of a uh, of the hosts are TLS. Um, there you go. When the guest doesn't create its own unique TLS structure. Okay, and then we're gonna get those perfect. We're gonna make those when we uh, hook state. Hey Siri, cancel all alarms. Thanks, bitch. Uh, Okay, uh, get PID, get TID, all right? So now, anywhere that we do uh, hook dot hook states, um, check if the hook state changed threads. If uh, hook dot owner is not equal to unsafe, does it? Would registering a pthread at fork to hack it and clear it work as well? I don't know. Because that might fuck up the guest TLS if I set a TLS. Right? And the guest might register that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, Kimu has to shadow all of those primitives, and I don't think it does. So how do I reinitialize this? Oh, it's just hook state default. Nice. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, panic. Okay, we're just gonna put some panics in here. Any place we do hook state, we're gonna add this. Um, we're gonna say like, uh, check hook, and then we'll just give it a hook. I don't know what hook is. Uh, make sure the hook state is localized. Is thread local? I could make a wrapper on this, but I'm doing this for now. Uh, so any place we do hook state, check hook, check hook, check hook, check hook. So it's before we do anything. Okay. Uh, unsafe FN check hook. Um, we might have to recreate the thread locals, uh, as sometimes the TLS is not uh, reinitialize on some forks, uh, on fork. However, it is on, uh, on what is it called? What is it fucking called? Uh, pthread creates. Okay, so let's see what happens. So this should panic, and this is uh, uh, history C. I don't want that reset in here. Okay, running this, building that, check hook. Uh, ref to ref cell hook states. I guess I need to lock that, which I can't do. Correct. This has to be an I-32. Um, unsafe, libc, get pid. Uh, get tid, yep. Thread ID will be fine here. Technically there's a race here. Because you could race this and like fork bomb until you get the new tit again, and then it did, you know, you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, uh, hook state. Okay. Uh, 
Um. Yeah. It's a reference to an I-32 hook state, ref cell hook state. Uh, hook. Hook dot one dot borrow mute. Uh, hook dot one dot borrow mute. One dot. One dot. Chat, I don't want to be writing this code. You don't want to be watching this code. I know. We're all in agreement here. Um, if hook dot zero is not equal to, uh, Unsay uh libsy get tid uh panic beautiful let's go uh that's running this runs this should panic it might panic uh I'm two and one it so it it might have panicked and I don't know that it panicked And I'm spewing a bunch of shit, so we're gonna turn off that, so then we can actually see things. Okay, this time for sure. Panic. Panic. Yep, definitely panicking. Perfect. So we are detecting. We are detecting that issue. Okay. So then, in this case, if it's not equal to that, then we're going to do hook dot one dot. Um, how do I do this? I guess this can race here, borrow mute. Well, hmm. Hmm. I'm going to move this outside. Check hook. Uh, can I set hook state here? So I can do hook state dot with hook here. Reset is false. Reset is true. So I don't want to borrow mute because borrowing might fail here. It might already be borrowed, right? Um... Nice. And then can I do hook state is equal to um libc get tid ref cell default uh ref cell new default hook state default. I don't think I can do that. Can I make this static mute? No. How do I do this? Um, hook states. Okay, uh, let's do this. Let's do, uh, hooks. Okay, well, when I have the width, can I do it here? I don't know what hook is, but hook is libc getted ref cell new hook state default. Um, expected a reference because that gives me a ref to that thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll do, uh, what is a hook? Uh, 
Uh, it's not hook. It's uh width on a local key. Ooh, with borrow mute. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, with set. Set start initializes the contained value. Can I do this? X dot set one two three. Oh, that's a cell method. I see. Uh, replace cell. Okay, I guess we only have with. That gives us a ref t. And uh, ref t in this case is what it contains. Okay, so um, let hook is equal to ref uh, ref uh, i32 ref cell hook states hook. I just, we're just going strict with these. We are just going strict with these to make sure that this matches what we expect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do hook as const blah as mute blah dot write. Uh, type of this value must be known. This. Right? Hook should be that. Should be a mute that. Right? And right doesn't drop what's there. They're not going to drop what's in there. Because we haven't touched it yet. We just detected that we have a little forky duplication thingy. Um, and we write over that. With a new, with our tid, and with the ref cell. Okay? And that probably fixes our issues. I don't know if that's safe at all. Probably fine. Um, okay. Well, uh, yeah. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave. <laughs> See you later. Cheers.